Greetings and salutations, my geeks, nerds, gamers, and landers. It is I, your host, Mr. G63, and today we are starting on the third episode of our Seven Days to Die Elf 20 tutorial section. In today's event, we are going to be looking at farming, food, and hydration. So without further ado, let's get on. So, in Seven Days to Die, like with a lot of survival games, you will notice that food and hydration are two key aspects that you need to keep your eye on. Now, as I explained in the first tutorial, uh, where I went over the HUD, you can see at the bottom of your screen, you have got the green food indicator, as well as the blue hydration indicator. Now, to get a better idea as to exactly what is going on there, all you need to do is head over to your character screen. So, if you hit the B key, you will see that there are the core character stats. If you click on that, you can actually see exactly how much food and water you need. Now, if you are trying to play a very um, efficient and economical game, this will come in handy because you will see that different foods and drinks have different values as far as your food and, and water is concerned. So, without further ado, let's start with farming. So, in Seven Days to Die, you do have the option of creating farms. Now, as you can see here, I have got a small little farm going up, going on here. We've got some coffee, pumpkin, we've got some corn, and we've got some mushrooms. So, I'm going to quickly take you through all the main items and explain to you their uses. So, we're gonna. If, if you ever come across one of these blueberry plants, please by all means go and grab it. Blueberries are well, they only have two uses at the moment. That is for immediate consumption, or you can use it to make yucca smoothies. Yucca smoothies, unlike your regular drinks, has additional bonuses. To your stats, which we'll, we will go over later. Next up is potato. We have got potatoes and we've got chrysanthemum. Now, chrysanthemum is not used for consumption. You can use it to make tea, and I do believe you can also use it to make dyes. Next up is the hop plant. Now, the hop plant you use to make beer, which can be also then used make some advanced elixirs. Then we have got the pumpkin plant, which will give us yummy pumpkins. Now, as far as health benefits are concerned, of course, the aloe vera plant is available. Now, the aloe vera plant, what this will do is this will actually give you uh, the ability to make aloe cream, which you can then apply to bandages to make your first aid bandages. I do believe that you may need position level one in order to make these. We can quickly check. So if we go to crafting, I want to make a bandage, first aid bandage. Yes, so there we go. So either you need the first aid bandage schematic or you need level one of position. Now the band-aid is like the most basic form of first aid in the game so if you are playing in a group it's always good to have a doctor at hand now next up is the golden rod now this is also a medicinal plant in your early stages you will be forced to eat uh, things that might not agree with you such as a few old sham sandwiches which have the possibility of giving you the delightful status of dysentery now, if you drink goldenrod tea, you can help cure yourself of that status. But next is, to me, the life of the game, and that's coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. 
we all need coffee. So if you find some coffee plants or you find some coffee seeds, please do not fail to grab. The next plant is one that is very, very, very common in the um, meadow or the forest biome. It's a cotton plant. Now, the cotton plant, you basically can use that to make uh, cloth. Uh, and cloth you can then, of course, craft into a myriad of other items, such as duct tape, bedding. Uh, you can make uh, your bandages out of it, clothing, etc. Now, another plant that you need to really keep your eye out for is the mushroom. Now, the mushroom is a plant that has a few special uh, abilities. Uh, no, no psychedelics here. I have to disappoint you on that one. But what is really cool with mushrooms is that they can grow anywhere now as you can see here uh this ground here is slightly different to the rest of the ground that's because if you are doing farming you need to construct farm plots now farm plots are very simple to make uh you need wood rotting flesh nitrate and clay now as you can imagine getting the amount of rotten flesh and nitrate powder in order to make these farm plots in the beginning might be a bit slow but once you've got some mining uh some nitrate mines up and running you will be able to get that sorted uh rotting flesh on the other hand is a little bit more rare to get so you may notice every now and again if you run around you will find cadavers so uh, these are, tend to be these little dead bodies lying around so all that you do is you grab out your little knife you pick it up and you've got four rotten flesh so store this don't throw it away it's not a waste it's not useless it is very 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 helpful so that is the basics on farming now when it comes to farming there are a few rules that you need to apply so, of course, like I said, you have to grow your plants in farm plots. Now, this, the only exception to this rule is, of course, mushrooms. Um, the reason for this is that mushrooms can grow anywhere. As you can see, if I run up to my little building over here, you can see I have got mushrooms growing against my wall. And they will actually grow there. You can grow them on the ground. I can grow them, well, in midair. And I can grow them against walls. Um, so this is, this is a nice thing because, for example, with a lot of your late stage recipes, you do need mushrooms. But to, to have to go and craft all the farm plots to grow your mushrooms can be a bit redundant. So what I normally do is I use the walls of my building or I build pillars so that I can build, you know, X amount of mushroom plants around the pillar. So it also helps to save a bit of space. Um, then another little plant that is very useful is corn. Um, corn can be used to make bread. You can make, uh, well, there, there are so many things that you can use as corn, but there are two types of corn. There is regular corn. Now, regular corn you can find literally on any farm. I'm sure if I cross the road over here to my neighbor, um, you might find one or two uh, corn plants lying around. Um, but the one that you really want to look out for, especially for late game, is super corn. Now, here's the thing with super corn. You cannot use it to, you can't substitute super corn with normal corn and vice versa. Super corn has a very, very specific function. So as you can see here, 
these are the five recipes currently that you can use to make that you can use super corn in one of these which is to me the most important is glue because there are currently two glue recipes um the first one is bones and murky water now the bones and murky water you can create in either the campfire or in the chemistry station as you can see if you do it in the campfire it costs seven bones and one murky water whilst if you do it in the chem station you use five bones and one murky water the problem is is that if you do not have enough bones you're going to run out of glue and glue is what keeps this game together you use it for adhesive or glue and you also use it for duct tape now duct tape is used in literally any major building uh, from vehicles to tools you need duct tape so having a totally renewable resource to use to make glue does come in very handy now before you start going and just harvesting like mad like what i've just done we need to look at the perks that govern farming so once again we head over to our skills under strength you will find the oh no sorry uh under sorry it's under fortitude so under fortitude you will find the living off the land perk now this is very simple these are very simple to get as you can see here you only need fortitude level five in in order to get the highest rank in living off the land now in previous editions of seven days to die you would harvest a plant so for example i've got some yucca over here now uh oh i don't have a yucca plant uh so let's look at something else coffee there we go so i've got this coffee plant here okay if i harvested this coffee plant it would leave behind a seed so basically what would happen is you pick the coffee and you get one seed from each plant and then you can plant well, it would automatically plant the coffee seedling. In Alpha 20, they have changed this completely. So they had they did nerf farming from Alpha 19 to Alpha 20, but here's the workaround. With the new Living Off the Land perk, you will notice there are a few extra or different uh, abilities. So, gatherer is double the harvest of wild plants or planted crops uh, craft seeds for flowers and decorative plants like goldenrod aloe yucca and farm plots cost 30 percent less to craft which means if we go into our crafting menu and we look at farms we need only we'll only need 60 um clay soil uh we'd need about i think 10 nitrate powder only about six rotting flesh and one wood or a two wood i can't i think they round up uh, but we can test that now so what i'm going to do with my lovely six, 26 points is i'm gonna first go and say that i'm gonna go up to fortitude five okay so, with the first one, we're going to buy this. So now if we go back to the farm plot. Quickly go check here. Farm plot block. As you can see there, now we need 70 instead of 300. We need 17 instead of the 20. We need seven instead of the ten 
but we still need four wood okay so there we go as you can see the price of the blocks have dropped which means it makes it more economical to make farms now as we move over to the second aspect which is forager now here you can craft seeds or berries and vegetables so that means you would be able to then craft your corn your potatoes your pumpkins all of those um, there's also a 50 percent chance to harvest one additional crop so for example if i go and harvest one mushroom i get two mushrooms but with the additional perk there is a chance now remember this is a chance doesn't mean you'll get it every time that you'll get a additional crop so every now and again instead of getting two you'll get three and of course farm plots will cost 50 percent less to craft so if we craft if we select that one we go back as you can see now it is 50 clay 12 nitrate five rotten flesh and still four wood okay then the last but not least is the level three farmer so this triples the harvest of wild or planted crops so immediately you do get more plants out of it and we are going to grab that so now let's look for a plant that i can harvest there we go i got four blueberries now when it comes to crafting seed there is a bit of a risk involved because when as i am collecting these plants you will see every now and again i might actually get the chance to harvest seed this time not so lucky uh oh wait there we go i got some mushroom seeds so there we go that was luck so now I have got a few of all my ingredients. However, I don't have five of any. So what we're going to do is, okay, let's just, let's just explain this. If you are going to go into farming, I recommend that you take level three of living off the land before attempting to farm. The reason for this is that if you start planting before you've reached level three, number one, you're not going to get as many resources. And number two, you're going to be working at a decrement. Because, for example, if you are, if you want to try and make seed, um, each plant is going to give you two. So for every two, three plants, you're going to be able to make one seed. Which means you'll be able to take three plants and make one new plant out of it which doesn't work so once you have gotten your level three living off the land you can then delve into farming because then we can look at there's a 50 percent chance of gaining seed so out of those three plants you have a chance to get the two seeds already then you'll still get your normal harvest which you can then convert back into seed thus increasing your farming yield now this may take some time so if you've got a farmer hope and pray he is a patient person because the plants also do take a long while so as you can see here my raw food we have i've got all my veggies and that sorted out here so for example we have got eggs, we've got super corn. These I put over here because these are normally hard to get. Um, you'll find that, it, for example, in the tutorial, you'll come across those nests. Now, with the nests, there are a chance that you may obtain an egg. Keep those eggs, don't use them immediately. The reason for it is that later on in the game, you will be afforded to make um, things like pumpkin pie. Uh, which will give you special abilities like additional bartering skills that can help you buy and sell your items 
at a better price and thus make more money if you are going into an economic game. So, let us say, our guy is hungry, he's had a hard day, so let's go have a look at food. So, the first foods that you will be able to make is charred meat and boiled eggs. Now, these require zero skill. Um, you can make these straight off the bat. All you need is the campfire. Uh, I do believe that for boiled eggs, let me just check here. Oh, yes. So, for the boiled eggs, a cooking pot will be required. So, there are... Let's go to the campfire. Let's start there. The campfire is basically where you'll be cooking all your food and making all your drinks. Um, basically, you you add wood to the fuel. It will give you a timer to tell you how much uh, cooking time you will have. And then you'll see there are three tools. Now, each of these tools opens up more recipes. Now, luckily, in my backup over here, I have got said tools. So, let's pop them in. There we go. So, the cooking pot speeds up cooking of boiled, a uh, bottled murky water. So, for example, if I want to make some, let's quickly... Grab some murky water here. And pop that in. Okay, so I want to now make murky water. You'll see it takes 40 seconds to turn my murky water into boiled water. However, when I add my cooking pot, it only takes 10 seconds. Um, cooking pots... Gr Cooking grills and beakers. Um, in the beginning, you'll find those in POIs. So that so keep an eye out on for them. Do not scrap them because you may want to have multiple cooking stations at a later stage uh, in order to bulk make certain items. And, of course, having multiple, um, especially the cooking pots, you can actually build explosives. <laughs> uh, so if you want to give a zombie a really hard time and making it step on a cooking pot landmine, well, keep the cooking pots. Now we're going to quickly go back to the food. So, you will also see that these different, I've now placed these foods in different Years. Now, the reason for this is that under the strength skill, you will find Master Chef. Now, I've discussed this with a lot of my uh, co-content creators, and we do not understand why Master Chef is under strength maybe it's supposed to be master chief i don't know but it's here nevertheless so our first level of bachelor will allow us to cook things like boiled grilled meats baked potatoes cornbread teas coffee as well as bacon and eggs so as you can see these are oh, sorry grilled meats it's supposed to be here um so you can see so these are your Still your primary um, cooking skills that you need for this. Um, so this is why I like to recommend that, especially for early game, um, everyone takes up at least one point in Master Chef, just so that you guys can make basic foods that actually do make a lot of difference. So when I say make a lot of difference, you will see that each and every type of food has got that. Now these stats will include a food, 
for example, for food, it will have food, but some will have health, water, and stamina bonuses, and may even have other bonuses, such as our lovely old jam sandwich, which has, can give you food of 15 points. It will subtract 5 health, it has no stamina bonus, and has a 12% chance of giving you dysentery. Now, I can assure you, especially when you're starting off, you don't want this. Um, other foods such as the eggs, uh, let's have a look here. Um, I think, ah, here we go, yes, the pumpkin cheesecake. So the pumpkin cheesecake will also give you a 5% bartering bonus. So this means that you will be able to Number one, get access to maybe better um, items from the traders. You'll get better prices buying and selling to the trader. Um, then food. Now, one of my favorite foods to make whenever I'm playing is boiled meat. The reason for this is that boiled meat not only gives you 10 food, but it also gives you 10 water. So, if you are feeling somewhat hungry and dehydrated, boiled meat will help both. As you will see, the higher the quality your food gets, the better the stats get. Until you get to the spaghetti, which will give you actually 122 hunger now if you go and you remember my character stat my character food is only 139 which means if i was to eat one plate of spaghetti regardless of how hungry i was i would pretty much be in the clear now the same goes for drinks so you'll see i've got empty jars here the empty jars you can make in the forge. Um, and you can use your empty, the empty jars to collect murky water. There are certain other um, uh, recipes such as the yucky juice smoothie, which does not require murky water however it does require snow and you do get snow in the snow biome as you can see we've got plenty of snow and so we move on to um you know your your other drinks so for example your uh if we go to master chef let's quickly go back there so your first level will allow you to make things such as bacon and eggs, boiled and grilled meats, baked potatoes, cornbread, teas and coffee, but it also increases your cook time. Oh no, let me rephrase that. It speeds up your cooking. So your 10 minutes, your 10 seconds for boiled water now turns to 9 seconds. Then we can go over to grand, so I'm just going to quickly grab that. The next one is grandma level. Now with grandma level, you can make steak and potatoes, which is a awesome um, early to mid range food. Um, it has very good stats as far as hunger is concerned. Uh, you can also make meat stews, vegetable stews, blueberry pie, and several pumpkin dishes. And here you can cook 20% faster. Then, of course, there's the short order cook, where you can make, um, where you can then use your canned foods uh, to make things like jam chowder, herbal stew, chili dogs, and fish tacos. There's also a, I think, toast, toast and tuna. Uh, but I think that comes in the army cook. So, army cook. Now, cook for any army, making gumbo stew, which is also a brilliant food source. Uh, shepherd's pie, spaghetti, and tuna gravy on toast. You cook 40% faster, and you lose use 20% less of the recipe's main ingredients. 
So this is intends to be a very good mid brain to end game skill to go for. And then of course, Master Chef. Uh, this then gives you the ability to create the grandpa series of recipes. Um, and you cook 50% pasta. Now, as you can see here, um, under drinks, there are there is Grandpa's Moonshine, Grandpa's Awesome Sauce, Grandpa's Learning Alexa, and Grandpa's Forget Him Alexa. Now, the Moonshine is very good for people who like to use the melee um, ability. So this basically increases your melee damage by 40%. Stun resist by 100%, increases your health by 600, and gives you 50% less damage and 50% uh, stamina regeneration. Uh, and its duration lasts for 45 seconds. That sounds like a potion that you want to have every day. Unfortunately, it has one tick side effect yeah you get absolutely sloshed you see double you hit a triple and you miss four times so yeah as you can see this is really disorientating and can cause quite a bit of nightmares while you are trying to fight off the horde unless you use this during horde night and you've got a nice bat where you can just sit and swing otherwise yeah the grandpa's awesome sauce is awesome but it has its drawbacks then the second one is the um uh, sorry that's the grandpa's moonshine then we have grandpa's awesome sauce now the awesome sauce is very useful as you can see for bartering um if you need to you know if you're shorting just those 10 dukes in order to buy that nice gun that you've been eyeing out for the last two days grab yourself a bottle of grandpa's awesome sauce and you may then be able to negotiate the price the next one which i find absolutely wonderful especially on horde night is grandpa's learning alexa grandpa's learning alexa increases your xp gain by 20 percent now this might not sound like much but take into consideration that if you make on average 100,000 XP points on Horde Knight, you can increase your, you can actually add an additional level easily to whatever XP that you got during Horde Knight. So we tend to try and make as much of this as possible but it has a slight issue we you need acid and you need super corn so that's why i say always make sure that you need that you get super corn and don't throw anything away because one of the other ingredients for this which tends to be a bit hard to find is dog food so you see dog food keep it safe do not sell it do not get rid of it do not scrap it do not eat it Use it for your learning Alexa. Then last but not least is Grandpa's Forget Him Alexa. So let's say you start you playing by yourself. Now you have gotten to the stage where you don't need to mine anymore. Uh, your base is all up and running. The main thing that you want to really look into is perhaps looting. But you know what? You don't have enough points. You're at level 50, which means it's going to take you uh, a good few hours before you level up again. And you want to respec your character. All you need to do is take one Grandpa's Forgetters Elixir and you can reset all your skill points. 
basically you can then respec your character from level one now you don't lose your levels you keep your levels you keep your level points it's just that you basically sell back all your level points and you can then respec so that's pretty awesome to have um another very awesome drink to ha find are mega crushes so mega crushes they give you very good hydration they give you stamina regen of 15 percent, but they also increase your running speed so if you need to get out of dodge as quickly as possible plug a mega crush and you will be well on your way the duration for these are two minutes each so that is it for me for today i hope that i have explained how the food and hydration works and if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section down below in tomorrow in next week's episode we are going to be looking at looting and pillaging so make sure you get your specs up enjoy your horde night have fun see you next week bye